Here's the thing, data is messy. It's head banging, swear at your screen, my data is never clean type of messy. Unless your data is created by ancient Egyptian scribes, it's never going to be free of errors and inconsistencies. So let's go look in our query editor to see how we can fix messy data. Here we have data showing the product, type, and color. So for example, our iPhone 13 comes in three different types, the Pro, the Pro Max, and the Mini. And each of these types come in a variety of colors. The end result that we want is this report here that shows our product and type merged into one column with the number of available colors for each product type. I've converted this to a table format and call this table example one. Let's send this to Power Query. Here in the query editor, we have our table. Let's remove the automatic change type step, then right click on the color column and go down to split column by delimiter and the split column by delimiter dialog box pops up. Let's go down to advanced options and the default that is selected is to split our columns into columns. But what we actually want is for our colors to be split into their own rows. So let's click on split into rows and click on OK. And our colors are automatically split into their own rows. Let's remove the automatic change type step. If you would like to know why I prefer to remove the automatic change type step and perform it at the end of my queries, please check out this video here. The link is in the description also. Next, let's fill down our product in the product column by right clicking on product and go to fill and select down and our products are filled down in the empty spaces. Next, let's select our product column and hold down the control key and select the type column, right click and select merge columns. Let's select space as our separator and let's name our new column product type and click on OK and our two columns have merged. Next, in the Transform tab, click on Group By, and we want to group by product type. Let's name the new column Number of Available Colors. Let's keep our operation as Count Rows, and click on OK. So we now have the number of available colors by product type. Let's send this to Excel. There is one thing you just need to be mindful of when using the split by rows transformation. If you had to have spaces in the column that you split into rows, for example, let's add a space after silver. And if we hit refresh, our number of available colors updates to five as it recognizes the space as a value. So let's go back into Power Query and future proof this. Here in applied steps, let's click on the split column by delimiter step then let's click on the drop down next to color and uncheck blank to filter out all our blanks and click on OK. Now let's go back to Excel. Let's add a few more spaces here in our source data. I'll add two spaces here and let's hit refresh. And our query correctly shows only the number of colors and not the spaces. And of course, this is dynamic. So let's add some new data here and hit refresh, and our query automatically updates. Here we have data showing our sales rep name, sales rep ID, and contact number. The way in which the information is filled in is quite inconsistent, as you can see by these blank spaces. Let's see how we can get to this end result here. I've converted this data to a table and called it example two. Let's send this to Power Query, for this cleanup, we are going to use the merge function. The merge function is usually used to join two queries, but it can also be used to clean up messy data. For this, we need to create two queries. So let's duplicate this query. Our first query we will use to get our sales rep name. So let's rename this to sales rep name. And for our second query, we want to get the contact numbers of our sales reps so let's rename this to sales rep number. As we're going to use the merge function to join these two queries, we need to ensure that we have a common column with common values in both queries. 
And our sales rep ID would work best for this. As you can see, we've got a complete list of sales rep IDs in our sales rep name query and the same for our sales rep number query. Here in our sales rep name query, let's select the sales rep name column and hold down the control key and select sales rep ID. Right click and select remove other columns. Then let's filter out all the null values for sales rep name. And lastly, let's future proof this by selecting both columns, right click and select remove duplicates. So this will be our primary table in our merge. And for our sales rep number, we want to get the contact numbers of our reps. So let's select sales rep ID, hold down the control key and select contact number, right click and select remove other columns. Then let's filter out all the null values. And once again, let's future proof this by selecting both our columns, right click and select remove duplicates. Now to merge these two queries, click on the sales rep name query and here in the home tab, click on merge queries and select merge queries as new. And this merge queries dialog box pops up. Our primary table is called sales rep name. Then for our secondary table, click on the drop down and select sales rep number. Next, let's select the column that is common in both tables, which is sales rep ID. And we're going to keep our join kind as left outer, as we want everything from our first table to be matched with our second table. If you would like to learn more about when to use the different join kinds, then please check out this video here. The link is in the description also. Let's click on OK. And we now have a new table called Merge1, which has our primary table with sales rep name and sales rep ID. Then we have this column here called sales rep number, which is the name of our secondary table. And you can see from this icon on the left here, the data in this column are all in a table format. And if you right click on one of these tables, we can see the contents of our secondary table, which is sales rep ID and the contact number. Let's rename this to sales rep data. Next, let's click on the expand icon on the right here so that we can display the contents of these tables in their own columns. We already have the sales rep ID column so we can uncheck that. We want the contact number, so let's keep that checked and uncheck use original column name as prefix and click on OK. Let's send this to Excel. I completely forgot to load these tables as connections only. So let's take our final query and cut this and move it to the sheet here. Then let's hold down the shift key and select our sales rep data, sales rep number and sales rep name sheets. Right click and delete these. And they've now loaded as connections only. And this is dynamic. So if we bring in new data and hit refresh, our query automatically updates with our new data. Here we have a report that has this fixed layout. It has our column headers and these four rows of data and comments below that. The number of rows for these comments can vary. What we actually want is this end result here, only showing the top four rows of data. Let's convert this to a table. Ensure my table has headers is checked. And I want to remove the table formatting so that this does not look like a table. I've renamed the table to sales report and let's right click and send this to Power Query. Here in the query editor, let's remove the change type step. Next, here in the home tab, let's click on the drop down next to keep rows and click on keep top rows. And this keep top rows dialog box pops up. Let's enter four as the number of rows that we want to keep and click on OK, and we're left with only the top four rows. And let's select all our data by using Control A, and here in the Transform tab, click on Detect Data Type, and our data types look good, so let's send this back to Excel. And we have our top four rows. Now let's say we had our data in this fixed layout, where there are comments at the top of our report, 
and the number of rows for these comments may vary. And at the bottom here is the five rows of data that we actually want. Let's convert this to a table and send this to Power Query. Here in the Query Editor, let's remove the Change Type step. Now here in the Home tab, let's click on the drop down next to Keep Rows and click on Keep Bottom Rows. And this Keep Bottom Rows dialog box pops up. The number of rows that we want to keep is 5. And click on OK. And we have our column header in the first row and our rows of data below that. As our headers are in the first row, let's click on the Transform tab and click on Use First Row as Headers and click on Use First Row as Headers. And our headers have been promoted and the automatic change type step has been performed. Everything looks good and we can send this back to Excel. Next, let's say we have a report where the data that we want is in a range of rows. So at the top of the range, we have some information about the report with some comments and comments at the bottom of the range. Let's convert this to a table. Ensure my table has headers is not checked. And let's just make sure that all our data is in our table and send this to Power Query. Here in the Query Editor, let's remove the change type step. Now, if we look at our table, the first row that we want to keep is row 13. And the number of rows that we want to keep are these five rows, including row 13. So in the Home tab, let's click on Keep Rows and click on Keep Range of Rows. So the first row that we want to keep is 13 and the number of rows is 5. So let's click on OK. And our first row is our column header. So let's promote that in the Transform tab and click on Use First Row as Headers. And our headers have been promoted and the automatic change type step has been performed. And we can send this back to Excel. In this example, we have a report that has the data we want in every alternate row. I've converted this to a table. Let's send this to Power Query. Here in the Query Editor, let's remove the change type step as always. In the Home tab, let's select the drop down next to Remove Rows and select Remove Alternate Rows. In the Remove Alternate Rows dialog box, we need to specify the pattern of rows to remove and keep. So the first row to remove is row 2, as we want the data in row 1 and we want to remove the comment in row 2. And the number of rows to remove is 2, which means row 2 and 3 will be removed. And the number of rows we want to keep is 1. And so the pattern goes, remove 2 rows and keep 1 row. So let's select OK, and we have the data that we require. Let's click on Transform and click on Detect Data Type. And we can send this back to Excel. Here we have data in this format, and what we actually want is this format here. Let's convert this to a table and send this to Power Query. Let's remove the Change Type step. Next, we want to fill down these ID codes in the null spaces. So right click on ID code and go to fill and select down and the ID codes are filled down. Next we want our two product columns, product in location 1 and product in location 2 to be in one single column and for our products which are laptop, mouse, keyboard etc to be in their own separate column and not split or pivoted as it is now. So to do this we're going to right click on ID code and select and pivot other columns. So now our column headers, which were product in location one and product in location two are in their own row called attribute. And the data that were in those two columns are the values, which are our products also in their own row. And pivot is definitely one of my favorite transformations in Power Query. If you would like to learn advanced unpivot examples, please check out this video here. The link is in the description also. Now we have our data in this format with random blank spaces and we want it exactly like the format that we had in example 7 but instead of using and pivot we will use a condition. I've converted this to a table so let's send it to Power Query. Let's remove the change type step and let's fill down our ID code. 
Next, let's click on Add Column and click on Conditional Column. And this Conditional Column dialog box pops up. Let's name our new column Item. And here is where we'll add our condition. This is like the if statement in Excel. So, what we're saying is if our product in location 1 equals null, then what we want as our output is the value in product in location 2. So to do that, for output, select the drop down and select a column. Then our column would be product in location 2. Else, our value for our output would be our product in location 1. So let's click on OK. And we have our products all in one column. Let's click on ID code and hold down the control key and click on item and select remove other columns as we don't need those two columns anymore. And let's select both our columns. And in the transform tab, select detect data type. And we have our data types correctly detected. And we can send this back to Excel. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.